Hi guys, how's it going? Ivano here with a little commentary of a game I did the other day. And this one is going to be, yeah, I guess a talking video where I talk about a little bit how you can play versus a pre-made if you are playing solo, which is of course a frequent request on my channel. So, I mean, the first thing you want to do as you run into this game is you want to look at your team. And you can see here we have at least what looks like one healer. So this Sipta guy, the commando, I put them on my focus target because it is very important to play with your healers, of course. So no one going to the pylon, which means we can expect they're going to go to mid. And we're running in and indeed we can see that we're playing against the pre-mate here. You can see that from the way these guys are playing, but of course also two of them have the same guild tech, the power tech and the vanguard. So we're putting the vanguard here and we can already see it's going to be a fun game. So it looks like they're both playing AP or Tactics in that case. And they're trying to burst me here. We make sure we pop our cooldowns immediately. Don't be greedy. And luckily it looks like we actually have a second healer. Because one healer is definitely not enough to keep you alive through two power attacks bursting. But you can see now I'm out of cooldowns and I'm not just jumping in. I'm kind of waiting for my healers to heal me back up. And these guys there, they seem indeed to be a pre-mate. Because as you will see in a second, we kind of keep fighting them in mid for the rest of the game. Managed to kill the Vanguard there, which is nice. Of course, we used our cooldowns, he used his cooldowns. So we know he didn't have anything anymore. And then this Red Bull guy. He also should be out of cooldowns, but I guess my shield is coming back up. His shield is also up. So we're switching targets to this commando. Now I'm not 100% sure if he's also in the pre-mate. But if he positions this offensively and he basically stands in my face, then of course we're going to hit him. We're not going to try to chase in there and go after the healer or something. In general, it's just better to kind of stay here and hit whatever is closest to you. So now I'm the only guy alive except for my healer. All my team is playing pylons. So I pop my shield immediately as they go on me. And they're running low. So I'm trying to chase the commando here because I just saw him use all his cooldowns. So I know I can kill him. Now it's again me versus two, two power attacks. Well, I keep saying two power attacks. I mean, it's one APPT and a Tactics Vanguard, but you know, Mirror Class is basically the same thing. And since our team got the pylon, you can see from the minimap, now they're gonna come in and we're gonna clean them up, which is how we win the fight. The healer runs back in here. He four speeds into three people. Not quite sure what that's about, but yeah, he has to use his barrier here. He's the only one alive, so we're hitting him. We're going to use our rail shot on the bubble, even though it doesn't do any damage. It, of course, gives you the energy loads, so yeah, stacks. So that's always a nice thing to do. And he face walks out here, which is great, because without face walk and bubble, we now know that we can kill the healer in the next fight. So they're all running in. Our carbonize comes off cooldown. We use it immediately. Carbonize like five people, which is amazing for the fight, of course. Now we're hitting the healer, and after the white bar of the... Other healer drops off, we should switch on him. But in fact, we're killing the DPS here first, or at least trying to. Popping all of our defensive cooldowns. And now I'm trying to help my healer, right? So this Romy Lester guy, we got lucky. We have two healers here in this game, even though we're not pre-made. And this is the only reason why I guess we're still alive in this game. And that's how it is, right? Like if you're playing against a pre-made with, you know, two decent DPS players and a healer, um, then the only chance you really have, like, you're not gonna kill them 1v3 ever. So what you need to do is you need to hope to have some good teammates on your side. And then you need to play your best to win the game yourself. And that's exactly what we're doing in this round. So we get lucky with our teammates. The assassin here is doing some decent damage. We have the two healers backing us up. And this commando, if I remember correctly, is also doing good damage. You can see it in the bottom here in my DPS meter. So the Fiora guy, he can have face walk again. Yep, he has face walk again. So that's unfortunate. The cooldown is very short, so should have probably tried to kill him before. But again, I think it's more important to try to kill the DPS in a situation like this. Because if the DPS are dead, then, you know, you're going to stay alive. The enemy healer is never going to kill you. And I think, I mean, maybe in past expansions of the game, it was more important to go for the healers first, because you know, a good healer could almost always out heal the damage of a DPS. But how the game is balanced now, I think it's more important to kill the DPS, thereby, you know, staying alive longer, increasing your own DPS pressure, and, um, you know, also making your healer's life a little bit easier. 
So pulling in the Sage, always nice to pull in. Of course, you have 40 meters range, absolutely blowing them up. We're controlling mid. And typically, if you control mid and your team also gets a pylon, it's an easy win. Unless you get sap capped or something. So the Fiora guy, he knocks us back. We're breaking it immediately. And now we see the whole team running in. We are tanking here, so we're popping our shield before we take the damage. To just not give them the option to go for us. They're going for our healer here. I guess it looks like they pulled him. Or he's out of position. But he's a commando, so he's fine. He just pops his cooldown, slowly walks back in. We get another carbonize on five or six people, which is really good. Because it buys your team some time to kite to a better position. So now we're just hitting whatever is closest. Again, we don't have our cooldowns right now. And when you don't have your cooldowns, you don't want to play too aggressive. So you can see here, I'm not really extending, I'm not going in. I'm trying to run away. I wanted to get behind this little corner there. And now I'm kiting, I'm kiting, I'm kiting until the enemy DPS switches off me. You can see I still have 20 seconds on my energy shield. And I don't really want to fight two power attacks and a commando when I don't have my energy shield. So I'm just playing a little defensive, but I guess not defensive enough. However, now I have energy shield again, so I pop it immediately. I carbonize them as well so I can get some offensive pressure. Maybe could have carbonized them before I popped the shield, get a little bit more efficiency, but yeah, no one is perfect. So even though I have shield running, you all know we have, we have three enemy DPS here, so I need to play a little bit careful. Now I'm going for the commando. Again, the commando is not on me, so that's great. Trying to help my healer. So this commando is for some reason running into a melee range and casting on my healer. Another thing that's important is, um, and you hopefully will see that at the end of the game, that, uh, you know, how you try to use your taunts, especially when playing against power attacks. So now this commando is casting tracer missiles. There's not too many reasons for me to use my taunt. But then when the power attacks are bursting and I have a single target taunt, of course, taunt reduces the damage that your, you know, taunted enemy will do to anyone other than, than yourself. So always when those power attacks are not focusing me, which, you know, they were doing for a large portion of the game, just casting into my cooldowns. So whenever they're going if trying to kill my healers, I hopefully going to use my taunt relatively on cooldown. So you can see it's coming off cooldown now, but this guy dies before I can use it. And the healer is still alive. Yeah, this is just kind of the strategy I was going for. Always trying to disrupt the power attacks damage, staying alive with my healers, playing defensively. Of course, guys, remember to send a nice message to your healers in the chat. Make sure your healers know that you appreciate them and they will keep you alive as well. So we won the fight in mid. Looks like the enemy team chose to play pylons. We already have our pylon. It looks like we are in a commanding position to actually win this war zone. Interesting. I think my win rate is probably higher when I play solo compared to when I play with our pre-mate. And I guess that says more things about our pre-mate than about my own gameplay. But nevertheless, now the enemy team is entering into mid as they capture their pylon, so we're preparing to do the same. I'm waiting a little bit here for the red buff to spawn, but the timing is unfortunate. You can see me hovering over my cooldowns. I don't want to run in there into two power attacks without my energy shield. So I'm waiting a little bit, but now that I have energy shield again, I run in. And that's really the thing. When you play APPT, energy shield is one of your best cooldowns. So when you don't have it, play defensively. When you do have it, go ham. As you can see me going ham right now, I'm going on this Red Bull guy, because he was uh, at least one of their two best damage dealers. So I'm always trying to, like, when I'm playing offensively, go for the best damage dealer on the enemy team. And when I don't have cooldowns and I try to play defensively, then I will go for, you know, hit whatever is closest as I try to kite away. So we kill the power attack. Next is, of course, the Vanguard. I'm trying to see whether my taunt usage is good here. So taunt is coming off cooldown soon. So we should be using it. There it is. Taunting the guy even though he dies. Maybe it would have been better to taunt the commando here. But nevertheless, we're winning the fight. Commando pops his Reflect, so we're using AoEs because they go through Reflect. And then we do the Burst combo. But he still has another cooldown, he has his own energy shield. So I guess in a second we do a fast target switch to the Sage here. They actually also had two heals, I think even though the Sage was mostly playing pylons. Now we're chasing the Sage. He lifts me, but I break it. Knowing that he has lift, I guess it means he doesn't have face walk. So we're doing a quick Burst combo. 
actually using energy burst here with three stacks, which is okay. Sometimes it's okay because, you know, I had red buff and power yield available. And I thought that maybe we could kill him in a quick combo. But he lifts it. So we're playing some pylon, I guess, to finish out the game, even though we already have enough points. Yeah. And if I remember, this was the last play of this round. And as soon as we get the pylon, maybe we go fight one more time in mid. But here, my assassin shows up. And that's really the kind of message. You can definitely win as a solo player versus pre-made. It's not about pre-made or no pre-made. It's simply about which team has better damage, which team has more healing, and of course, you know, maybe a tank. And which team plays better. And, you know, in this case, both teams had two healers, both teams had decent damage, there were no tanks. So then the team that plays better wins. And those are really the most fun games in my opinion. And, you know, everyone that says uh, as a solo player, you cannot win against the pre-made. I think simply maybe needs to watch this video and hopefully learn some lessons on how to play, when to play offensive, when to play defensively, how to support your healers, how to use your taunts, look at everything I'm doing. I hope I expand a little bit, right? Like in this situation, again, I'm on the mark targets, so it's important you mark the targets. I'm supporting my teammate up here with taunts. I try always to keep my taunts on cooldown. And even though he dies here, we end up winning the war zone. I have my cooldown running, so I can see they're hitting me in the target of target. I know I'm gonna survive since the war zone is over, so I do some more damage. Win the game. And of course, if you beat a pre-made as a solo player, never forget to write GG in the chat. As you can see, some nice damage numbers. Even though the DPS wasn't that impressive, we had to play defensively. Took a lot of damage, died zero times, got top protection. So all in all, I would say a very successful game. So that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.